Before we look at too many more algebra concepts, uh, we want to get an idea of how we classify numbers. It's important for us to understand uh, what kind of numbers are called what and uh, why they're called that. So uh, where are we right now? Again, we're looking at foundations of algebra and uh, hopefully we already looked at evaluating expressions and right now we'll look at how to classify numbers and of course that's in the greater context of uh, we'll, we'll move on to solving equations and solving inequalities and, and doing other things um, but uh, for right now evaluating expressions and classifying numbers uh, so let's take a look Fortunately, most of the numbers that we've looked at all fall under one big category, and that's the category of real numbers. Uh, and then under real numbers, uh, there is this concept called rational numbers. Rational, no, uh, uh, all real numbers are uh, re real. Um, every rational number is a real number. And, and rational numbers are numbers that are, that can be made into a fraction. We'll look at that more in a second. Then there's this thing called integers, and every integer is a rational number, and every integer is a real number. So I'm, I'm going uh, into subcategories here. Uh, integers we'll look at in a minute, more detail. Then there's whole numbers, and then there's natural numbers. Every whole number is an integer. Every whole number is a rational number. Every whole number is a real number. Same with natural. Every natural number is a whole number, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and, and then there's a whole other category of numbers, and those guys are called irrational. Irrational and rational numbers are are all are both kinds of real numbers. So real numbers are all the numbers that you've ever seen in your career as a math student and uh, and they consist of rational and irrational numbers. And then of course the rational numbers are made up of integers and whole numbers and natural numbers. Now let's let's get into some examples so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. One great way to visualize how the, the different types of numbers relate to each other, the different classifications relate to each other, is to look at the, uh, the numbers uh, maybe in a Venn diagram. So we're going to look at these numbers as sets of numbers. So here's what our Venn diagram looks like. And we have natural numbers, of which all of them are, are, are whole numbers, and all the whole numbers are integers, and all the integers are rational, and all the rational are real. And then off to the side here are the irrational. Now let's take a look and see what, what examples we have here. Natural numbers, a good definition for them, are all the numbers that you can count on your fingers and your toes. Um, so And beyond, of course, your friend's fingers and toes and your relative's fingers and toes. Um, natural numbers start with one, and then you go two, three, four, five, uh, dot, 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 on and on and on to as high a number as you can count to. And then whole numbers are just like natural numbers, but we also include zero. So zero, one, two, three. Uh, we don't even need that. Uh, I'm going to try to eliminate these commas so that uh, I don't have to write quite so much, and neither do you. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, dot, dot, dot. That just means keep going, uh, and uh, or et cetera, or so on and so on. So uh, zero uh, whole numbers are all of the natural numbers plus zero. Integers are all of the whole numbers and their opposites. So uh, that that'd be probably worthwhile to write down. And uh, just to write out how this looks as examples, um, the opposites of these numbers are are the negative version of them. So these are these are all positive. Um, so if we look at like uh, negative five negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Those are all integers in addition to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dot, 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 so on and so forth. And in this case, we could put a dot, dot, dot at the beginning as well because negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, those are all uh, whole number. those are all integers as well. So integers are whole numbers and they're opposites. And it's kind of, this is kind of a good definition to add to your list of definitions. The word opposite, it specifically means if you're talking about positive 3, the opposite of it is negative 3. And if you're talking about negative 4, the opposite of it is positive 4. It'd be good for you to know that definition. Opposite means the same number, different sign. Okay, rational numbers. Rational numbers are any number that you could write as a fraction. 
sorry, got a little lazy here, decided to type it out instead of write it out. Uh, so again, rational is any number you can write as a fraction. Um, now, fractions have a very technical definition. It's entirely possible to write out a uh, uh, something that looks like a fraction, like 3.5 over, um, you know, maybe 7 and 2 thirds, right? I mean, that sort of looks like a fraction. Um, technically, that doesn't meet the, the definition. Uh, instead, if we want to really have a fraction, we've got to have an integer over another integer. And that's why it's handy to know this definition. So uh, we might have a number p over a number q, and p must be an integer, and q must be an integer to have a fraction. So rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction. And those include some examples that would not surprise you. Uh, so for example, uh, we could have uh, two thirds. That's a reasonable rational number. But also five is a reasonable rational number because it can be written as five over one or ten over two uh, or a number of others. And also negative uh, thirteen. Um, because that can be written as negative 13 over 1 or negative 26 over 2 or again a variety of other ways to write it as a fraction. Also, uh, this might surprise you a little bit, is that uh, 1.7 is a rational number because again that could be written as a fraction. It could be written as 17 over 10. Now that's an improper fraction but still a fraction nevertheless. Also, <clears throat> This one's a little bit strange, is that you could have something like 2.3 repeating. Uh, anytime we have a repeating decimal, that can also be written as a fraction. And uh, we'll get to that in later chapters, but uh, certainly you might believe that uh, we could take 0.3 repeating and write that out as 1 third. In fact, if you try it on your calculator, try 1 divided by 3, see what you get. You'll get 0 0.3333333 3 all the way to the end. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, there's ways we could show that it repeats forever, but, but for now, we'll see that 0 0.3 repeating it can be written as a fraction and therefore it's a rational number. All of these numbers are real, so rational, integers, whole, and natural. Also, there's these irrational numbers. Now, irrational you may have heard of before. Uh, the number, the number that represents the the number that pi represents is considered to be irrational. Pi is 3.14, and it goes on and on and on. But unlike, I'll just put dot dot dot. Unlike 0.3 repeating, there's no repeating pattern for pi. It goes on to infinity with no repeats. Uh, it is called a uh, non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. That's the definition of irrational numbers. But but we can't always just look at a number and tell that it's non-repeating and that it's uh, and that it's uh, non that, that it's non-terminating. Uh, so, so pi is one where when we look at pi, we don't know that it's irrational. We just know that 3.14 da 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 goes on and on. We know that it is irrational because we've been told. Um, uh, so I'm going to tell you about a couple other, a few other numbers you need to know about that are irrational. Um, any number that, any number where we take the square root and the number itself is not a perfect square, that's going to be irrational. You can try square root of two on your calculator, and you see you get a lot of decimal places. Uh, I can't, I can't show you right now that it goes on forever. That that uh, it, there is a proof for that, uh, and I will link to it from this video if you'd like to take a look at it. Um, but uh, square root of three, uh, that's considered irrational. Uh, square root of five, that's irrational. Square root of nine, you might think is irrational because it's a, an odd number, but nope, that's just three, so that's not irrational. And uh, even square root of eight. Um, is uh, that's an even number. These guys are all prime. You would think that this guy might be a rational number, but it's not. And the reason why is because we can rewrite square root of 8 as, uh, if, if you remember, 2 root 2. So because of that, uh, uh, even square, any number, any number where the, any, where we have a radical and the number underneath is not a perfect square, like this guy here, uh, is going to be an irrational number. That's going to be important as we learn more about algebra. And I'll leave you with this one final concept that, again, 
All irrational numbers are real numbers. All natural whole integers, rational and irrational numbers are all real numbers. Um, it's just that ir irration no ir irrational numbers uh, do, not, do not look the same as any of these others. But uh, a, na uh, a, 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 a number like 4 could be a natural, a whole, and an integer, and a rational number. A number like square root of 2 is only irrational. A number like negative 3 is only an integer and a rational number. And a number like 2 thirds is only rational. Um, and then all of these guys are also considered real numbers. So uh, 4 is natural, whole, integer, rational, and real. And uh, pi is irrational and real. Okay, I'm going to leave you at that.